Hey, I'm Ryan McKee from Our Lads Football, and today I'm talking to Mike McCartney, the head of football at Vayner Sports. No, not Mike McCarthy, head coach of the Cowboys, someone who Mike gets confused for on Twitter regularly. However, you might have heard of Mike McCartney's name when Kirk Cousin got his $180 million contract from the Atlanta Falcons because Mike is Kirk's agent who oversaw the deal. Mike has been an agent for over two decades now, and before that, he worked as a scout for the Chicago Bears and Philadelphia Eagles after coaching stints at University of Colorado and University of North Carolina. So he has a unique perspective on football, having seen it from very different angles. So let's get to that interview now. I, I read about your, your background. It sounds really interesting. Can you just briefly describe uh, how you got to the place where you are today? Yeah, so I grew up in football. Uh, my dad was a longtime college football coach, coached at Michigan under the legendary Bo Schembechler for eight years. He was head coach at Colorado for 13 years. You'll see a little Colorado behind me. Um, and, um, you know, when you grow up in football, you eat, sleep and drink football. And, uh, you know, I, I played quarterback in, in high school and college. I coached for five years, uh, three at Colorado, two at North Carolina. I was a pro scout for the Chicago Bears for six years, and then I was a director of scouting for the Philadelphia Eagles for three years and uh, have been an agent for 24 years. So it's my 33rd year in the NFL, and I've, I've, as I tell guys, I get, I'm one of the few, maybe the only one, who's played, coached, drafted, and represented players. And I know it's not always a straight path for a lot of agents and people who represent players, but that seems like a – a unique path to take going from scout and coach and uh, to representing players. Yeah. I, I mean, there's very few on my side of the table who have done that. Now I've definitely had some scouts for the years ask me about it and they, you could tell that they were thinking about it. Uh -huh. um, but you know, I, I, it was a time of my life where my, my boys were four, two and one at the time and trying to find balance uh, by on being on the team side was challenging. And then even when I was home, I was so obsessed with trying to win a Super Bowl. And truth is, I grew up that way. My mom had a saying on August 1st every year. She would say, football's here, goodbye, dear. And then we didn't see my dad <laughs> for six months. So now he would be home here and there, and he'd look right through us. And so at, at, one, at some point in my life, I. I just asked myself, this is the way I grew up. Is this the way my kids should grow up too? And, um, but I love football. And when I decided to leave the team side to be able to work for players and go through all their highs and lows and all the things they go through, I thought that would be both challenging and, and rewarding to do that. So um, mm -hmm. 24 years later, I, I'm still doing it. How did your time as a scout and a coach help you as an agent? Oh, it's helped me immensely. Uh, I do understand the game of football. I know how to evaluate uh, players, whatever position. I know how teams make decisions. You know, I've been in meetings. Uh, I've uh, I've had chalk thrown at me by other coaches. Uh, you know, I've I've been through all that. I've been through training camps. Uh, I've been to nine combines. Just you know, so much of what a player wants to go through. As a player, as I've been through it. I didn't play in the, in the NFL, but I was obviously a scout in the NFL for nine years. So, um, But the biggest thing, I think, is just knowing the game of football. And mm -hmm. when I first became an agent, I was trained, obviously, to, to study the game and learn the game from the lens of a scout working for a team. So I had to adjust, how do I take this information that I, that I know and, and, you know, give it to players to help them. And so the first couple of years, I, I tried to work through the, that transition. And that's kind of, I feel like my strength now is I can look at a player and give them feedback based on what's best for him. And uh, knowing that I've, I know the game and, and how to evaluate. What advice would you give someone who wants to become an NFL scout? Because our lads were big into scouting. And so we have a lot of people reaching out to us wondering how to become a scout, what kind of advice would you give? Yeah, I get questions all the time as well, uh, even just breaking into sports. And and as far as scouting, I, I will say we have a lot more avenues to scout. 
right now because of college football and, and the transfer portal, you know, um, you know, schools all over the country beyond the 32 teams in the NFL are looking for evaluators, looking for guys that, that can watch players and project, can they play at a, a different level, you know, and, and scouting is, is different. I, I like to think and say, you know, coaches watch through a, a different lens. They watch the mm-hmm. game of football through a lens of here's the play, here's the coaching point, did you do your job? Scouts are different. We don't, I'm going to say we, because that was my training. We don't know the play call. We don't know the coaching point. We're looking at through the lens of, do you have the attributes or the traits needed to play at our level? And so there's just an inherent need to be able to truly evaluate, you know, talent. And, um, and there's a lot more opportunities now in college football. Everyone needs to evaluate, you know, the transfer portal has just been an enormous game changer. And then throw NIL in the mix and, you have to be able to uh, put the right price, you know, on players as well. So I think the best way to get in is um, it's, it's a, a, a business of networking. Um, you have to network, network, network. Um, I grew up with the rotary phone. Um, so there's a lot more opportunities to network now <laughs> than there were when I was growing up. And um, I would, you know, tap into all those and, and get to know people. I would, if I'm a young person that wants to get into scouting, I'm going to watch tape, write reports and find ways to share those reports with mm-hmm. people across college and pro football, knowing that a lot of times it'll be thrown in the trash. Who cares? I'm just mm-hmm. going to keep taking my shot. Um, I also think um, that when you get in an interview, this is my belief that a lot of young people want to get to know a little bit about everything. And I kind of want to flip that and say, I encourage you to get to know a lot about a little. In other words, let's just say you're a football coach and, and you're interviewing two guys. And the first guy says, oh, I know a little bit about quarterback play. I know a little bit about defense, whatever it might be. And he can talk, and but he doesn't really go into great detail. And the second guy comes in and he says, hey, coach, I don't know a lot but I can go in in great detail and talk about the quarterback center exchange for an hour. That guy is the one that the coach is going to hire because the coach is going to say, if you can learn that much on your own about the quarterback center exchange, I can get you the rest. So I just think, think for young people, think about networking, 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 and then what can I do to just become an expert in one thing? And then when you are, as much as you can be, when you do get in an interview, I think that can be a separate. That's really interesting. I haven't thought of it in that terms. Would you give similar advice to somebody who wants to become an NFL agent? Yeah, I, you know, the agent game is uh, uh, all about recruiting and representation. And those are two different worlds, right? Yeah. Um, 99.9% probably come in thinking I got to recruit and sign players and that's their focus. And it is important to sign players but then it's important to represent them at the highest level. And there's always going to be tension between recruiting and representation. Um, So, but similar, if you're young and you're interested in the agent business, it's still about networking. And then if you have the ability to have access to players, you're going to have a much greater chance to to have someone answer your phone call or your text or whatever it might be. You know, we get, thousands of requests for people who want to join the agent world. And it's just, you're looking for something to be different, unique and, and separate. Mm-hmm. Um, so sports can be hard to get into. And then the other thing I would say either way, you know, if you want to be a scout or a coach or you want to be an agent, you may have to start somewhere else, you know, get your foot in the door somewhere, somehow in the sports world. And it may not be exactly what you want to do, but if your foot's in the door, now your ability to network goes up exponentially, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but then, you know, it's going back to scouting, you know, you, if you, if you truly want to scout, then scout, watch players, teach, you know, learn how to study players from that lens and write reports, write a lot of reports, get into the habit of writing down what you're seeing and, and articulating it on paper and, you know, over time, you'll get better at it um, mm-hmm. so that if and when you get that 
that real job interview, you're prepared for it. I was doing some research on you. I was watching some clips and it must feel amazing when the sports talking heads shows keep saying, who is this guy's agent after like a, a recent contract, like the Kirk Cousins contract? Uh, I mean, is that the best feeling or what's the best feeling and being an agent? Oh, that's uh, I, I would say the best feeling is uh, partly doing a contract that is uh, that the player is excited about. It's rewarding. It's life changing. There's no doubt that is um, extremely rewarding on our side. I think the other piece, though, is honestly going through the highs and lows with players. You know, the first guy I ever signed was Josh McCown. I played 18 years um, in the NFL. He had another year in, in the UFL. And he experienced some really cool times and he experienced some tough times. He changed a lot of teams and just kind of going through it with him to know that he had, you know, beyond his family, he had one person that was just going to care about him and, and be there every step of the way. And it wasn't always easy for any player. You know, but just going through it with them, when players start changing teams, they realize, you know, hey, they're on their own, right? And mm -hmm. to have their agent that they can just count on no matter what, you know, that is very rewarding on this side as well. Once you move a team, you feel like you're probably losing everybody, but you still have your agents or your representation with you. Yeah. And, and you know, it's new. And, and the first time you move, it's, you know, like, what do I do? <laughs> you know, where do I where do I live? You know, things like that. And just and then football, you know, uh, just going through the football highs and lows with guys and giving them feedback and and all that. You know, you know, I mean, good example, Kirk calling me on draft night. You know, we didn't know the Falcons were going to take Michael Penix and just kind of working through it. He knew. Of course, he's going to call his mom and dad and his wife, but he knew he could call his agent and, and talk through what are the ramifications? What does this mean for me? And, you know, and, and all that. Um, so just being there when the, it is fun when they do great, but it's also rewarding when when they need you when it's not going great. Along those lines, I mean, how do you build and maintain trust with your clients? Yeah, I think everybody's got to play to their strengths and my strength being a guy who grew up in football, um, uh, I'm just, I'm going to be real honest with players and I want to have credibility, whether it's teams or players that if I say something, it's truthful and I, and I believe it. I just was talking to a college kid, watching tape with him over the weekend, give him recruiting and, and I challenged him, you know, in his game. And, uh, we talked, we watched tape for about an hour and, one of, the, one of the young guys I work with a couple hours later said, yeah, I talked to so-and-so. And so what'd you think? He goes, yeah, Mike was hard on me. <laughs> and I kind of chuckled because I wasn't that hard, but I've just always pledged to be really honest with players. Um, and I just think it gives you credibility over time. Does every player want that? No. But if I'm going to be honest and they don't want it, then go choose somebody else. So if they choose me, while well, building a relationship based on honesty, then that's hopefully they know that's what they're going to get throughout their career. And that's what they need. They have enough guys and girls telling them how great they are. They need people that are going to be honest with them and, and, you know, tell them the truth at all times, even though it's not, and not easy. Do you have any stories about the biggest challenges you faced as in your career as an NFL agent? Well, um, I, well, I'm sure I have a lot of stories, uh, <laughs> you know, that you can tell <laughs> you know, to share one. There's a, there's a million recruiting stories. There's a million, maybe not a million. There's a lot of recruiting stories, a lot of contract, um, you know, negotiations I've been through, but, um, I'll make myself look bad here. Um, back in the uh, same year, Kirk Cousins was drafted. Muhammad Sanu was coming out of Rutgers. And on, and I had told him, you, I think this was might have been the first year they went to the Thursday night draft uh, for, for the first round. And I said, Muhammad, you are not getting drafted in the first round. I'm telling you right now, it's not happening. You're going to be a second or third rounder. So don't have a draft party on first night. Don't expect it. And uh, But he didn't really completely believe me, to be honest. I love knew the person. Love them. Well, in that particular draft, 
I, I kind of had a heads up on, on who was getting drafted where. And so I completely annoyed most of Twitter and, and I tried to couch it in the right way. I believe the, you know, lions are going to take so-and-so. And it got to a point where I had hit like 12, 13 in a row and, People were either getting mad at me or praising me on Twitter for, you know, being so accurate. And um, and then he texts me in the 20s and he said or he calls me and he says, Mike, uh, I just got drafted by the Bengals. Well, as you know, the draft, the teams make their decision and the teams or the, you know, the league puts their jerseys name on. And it's a few minutes after they actually draft them that we in the public find out. So when he calls me, he's like, yeah, I just got drafted by the Bengals. And I remember saying, no way. And he goes, no, I really did. And I'm like, who called you? He goes, Marvin Lewis. I said, get out of here. He goes, Mike, I just got drafted by the Bengals. Well, at that moment, I lose it. I'm just ecstatic, you know, overjoyed. And I truly love this guy. So I tweet out, Sanu to the Bengals with about 15 exclamation points. And um, when they when the Bengals are on the clock, uh, ESPN, the Cincinnati Bengals select Kevin Zeitler. And I'm like, what just happened? And so I call him. I'm like, bro, what just happened? He goes, I don't know. I'm like, you said Marvin Lewis called you. He goes, I did. And I said, send me the phone number of whoever called you. It was a Rutgers student who tried to uh, do a prank on Muhammad. And so not only did he, you know, get used by this guy pranking him, but his agent put it on blast on Twitter. <laughs> and, um, you know, to his credit, he handled it like such a, a pro. And, and Marvin called me that night and said, you know, what happened? And I said, hey, this doesn't have anything to do with you guys. It was a prank call. And ironically, they ended up taking him in the third round. But Muhammad, his buddy, did a, um, you know, did a video of the whole week, uh, what was going on. And it just always made me laugh that he got the call from the real call from Marvin Lewis. He knew he was getting drafted by the Bengals. And in this video, he says to his family, I'm getting drafted by the Bengals. And nobody reacts until they hear it on ESPN. <laughs> and once they, hit, they announce it on ESPN, the Bengals select Muhammad Sanu, then they erupt. <laughs> he would, they were not going to believe until they saw it on TV. <laughs> so, uh, and it worked out for Muhammad. He had a great, you know, long career. And, but that was embarrassing. And I had to answer to it. And thankfully, he was such, he was very gracious and understanding. And it was out of my excitement, right, that I, that I did that tweet. Uh, but it was still terrible in the long run. Uh, I was actually, I was going to ask you about, Twitter because you're fairly active on there and you also engage with people who mistake you for the Dallas uh, Cowboys head coach, Mike McCarthy, uh, which is hilarious. Um, how does social media play a role in today's, you know, sports media career, whether it be uh, a scout or an agent? And do you recommend to your uh, colleagues that they're on social media? Yeah, from a recruiting standpoint, it, it, I think it does help that when that, you know, from a credibility standpoint, if you have that blue check or Instagram, whatever it might be, that you're, um, you know, um, engaged with, the, you know, promoting your players, um, those things are important. I think from the, just the pure business of being an agent, it is important to, to know the media and, and who's who and, and who has uh, who can get you information. You know, there are some national reporters that we all know that they're they're privy to real inside info. Um, and so, you know, there's a quid pro quo with some of the information, you know, uh, exchange in this business. Um, one of the things I've evolved to is um, I noticed, I don't know, eight to 10 years ago that every time I was finishing a deal, I would. I would, two things would happen. I would share it with somebody in the media and whoever got it first, everyone else was mad that they didn't get it first. <laughs> and then secondly, when I would share it, you know, with a national reporter, then everyone else would say, would send me or call me and say, 
can you verify that this is true? And it was just wearing me out, to be honest. So I figured out where I just tweet my own news now, you know, when a guy signs and and then nobody calls me. <laughs> I don't get interviews. I don't get called for verification. And it's just it's actually pretty nice. And, you know, when the I've had some reporters complain and I said, well, listen, I'm not trying to expose you like I can give it to your competitor. No, no, no. We're good with the way you're doing it. So it's a way that where nobody's going to get mad that I that I made one guy look or one gal look better than the next. Um, that's actually helped me in, in a lot of ways because I can then control the message as well. And that's the beauty of social media is if you know how to use it, you can control your own messaging, whether you're a player, an agent, team. You know, there's some teams that do a good job of that as well. I mean, I would imagine social media is one of the biggest things that has changed the game since you started as an agent. Considering I've been two and a half decades in, I, I can remember my first uh, year after I signed Josh McCown, having one TV in my living room. Um, and uh, there was no social media back then. Um, and so maybe a computer for a website with statistics was in front of me. You know, well, now I've got three big TVs. I've got an iPad with a fourth game going. I've got a computer with stats and I've got my phone with Twitter following what I'm missing. Maybe there's an injury situation. You know, we can get some quick information via Twitter these days. So, uh, so there's no doubt on game day, I am I'm very engaged with at least following it on Twitter. Um, you know, now when the Cowboy fans start, you know, tweeting at me or like the Packers thing back in the day, I might engage a little more, but um, yeah, it just, it's just, it's, it's information. It's just being on top of everything that's going on with your players and social media has really helped um, being an agent from when I started to now. I mean, it's a lot different. It's, we used to just recruit guys going in their last year and now with NIL and the transfer portal, Young Mike is rolling over in his grave recruiting these young guys right now. <laughs> so I'm actually enjoying it. Um, and I, and I, I love many pieces of NIL. The first being, you know, it really reveals who the kind of guys that we want to work with. You know, when you put money into somebody's pocket, especially somebody young, I find one of two things happen. Either they get greedy and want more and more and more and lose their focus or they get the money and the pressure's off and allows them to refocus on, or focus even more on what they love. And those are the kind of guys that we want to represent. So I have enjoyed the NIL piece more than I would have thought. Um, and, and, and just knowing that there's a little more equity with sharing the dollars, you know, it was really bad there for many years. So, but yeah, the, the game's changed a lot uh, for being an agent. How do you see the landscape of sports management like changing over the next decade as the NIL and transfer reporter has become so huge? Yeah, look, I think the problem is, you know, you don't have to be certified to be an agent in college football or college sports. So and that's a huge problem because I, I, I often ask teams, whether it's a head coach in college football or a general manager, you know, I, I ask the question a lot, what percentage of agents are you dealing with that are pros? And I get somewhere between 25 and 30 percent. And they all then follow up and say, would much rather deal with one of the professional agents because we know the rules. We know what you can and can't do. We know how to get deals done. You know, um, there are some uncles and dads out there that are trying to do deals and and the schools hate it from what I can tell, you know, because. There's more emotion involved. You got to be really careful what you say about the player in many cases, you know, if it's a parent or a relative involved. So I, it's, it's going to be interesting. This, you know, it just feels like we're headed to an employer type situation where there's going to be a collectively bargained agreement and there's going to be a union involved, you know, mirroring pro sports. But uh, until then, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of the, you hear the term, it's the wild, wild west a lot. And mm -hmm. having gone through the last couple of Decembers, especially this past one, it is, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a whole new ball game. And it's, 
my my December was extremely busy this year. So, yeah, I, I, and I can see where there's going to be even more and more changes. I mean, do you see NIL keeping players in college sports longer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that if you're a player that you know deep down you're probably not completely ready, you might be a mid-round pick, um, but your school or another school wants you and they're going to pay you, you can justify staying another year. And it helps on a lot of levels, you know, by getting – a little bit of dollars in your pocket. There is no pressure. You can finish your degree. You can grow another year in the weight room and, and with your skill set, you know, and, and then be just another year more mature when you get in the NFL. But I think there's been a – we've seen a big change, especially at the quarterback position. There are a lot of quarter, – the quarterback position is just wild too. It just – it's like – it's 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 kind of like the backup quarterback situation in the NFL. It's a game of musical chairs and – you know, there's um, there's a lot of quarterback movement. I can remember sitting in a meeting, scouting meeting, on uh, Troy Aikman. We were debating on Troy Aikman, and there were some old school scouts who were aghast that he had transferred. Like back then, that was a scarlet, you know, red letter. If you transferred, that meant you had a problem, you know. And now we just everybody transfers. <laughs> so I think every I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, uh, of the six first rounders, five had tra- four had transferred, maybe. Yeah, four of the six had transferred. So, you know, other than Drake May and JJ McCarthy, I think the, all the other four had transferred. So, it's just where we are now. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about what makes Vayner Sports unique compared to your competitors? Yeah, Vayner Sports uh, was founded. Well, let me back up. Gary Vaynerchuk and at the age of 33 and his little brother, AJ, at the age of 21, this is back in 2009, started an independent ad agency and they made a bet that businesses would need to use social media. It sounds completely obvious today, but in 09, it wasn't. And that quickly grew and they, that's now the largest independent ad agency in the world, uh, led by Gary. AJ did it for several years and then decided he wanted to transition. He started our sports agency probably about eight years ago. And so I had been with a different firm and I joined Vayner uh, right after the uh, onset of NIL. And um, I was with a great firm before for 21 years and just two things. One, I kind of needed a change. 21 years in the same office. Sometimes you need a change in life. And I was probably there. But more importantly, I thought Vayner with their uh, understanding of the, with the ad agency and, and marketing and, and how the, the business was transitioning from a, maybe a, it used to be agencies recruited from a Hollywood standpoint to more of a business and, and uh, branding standpoint that Vayner would be poised to be great. And that's exactly what's happened. Um, and then we got a great team of a lot, a lot of young agents. I know I'm not one of them, uh, but we got a lot of young agents and a lot of great energy. And uh, I'm just really excited about our team and, and where we're headed. And I'll say this, and I say it a lot to uh, when, I, when I'm sharing with families, there are two kinds of agents. Uh, a lot of agents, unfortunately, too many make decisions for their players with their own bottom line in mind. And I can see it. You know, I haven't been in the business a long time. And we are always going to make decisions what's best for our player. And you know what? The bottom line takes care of itself over time. If you do what's right for the player every single day, and you're going to be fine on the bottom line standpoint. So we always put our player first. It's something that's really important to all of us. And um, and we're proud of it. We're proud that we care about our guys. This is the last question I have. Uh, and it's a little bit weird, but uh, if let's say fans could play fantasy football, with agents, <laughs> what kind of things would agents do that would score fantasy points? You're going to get my mind uh, working here. You know, if we were to follow contracts and when uh, the numbers are released to the media, whether an agent does it himself or an Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport, you know, it is unbelievable to me how many of these uh, releases in the media are a contract that says up to or with a max of 
it's mind boggling to me why agents can't just say, hey, I did a four year deal for this dollar amount that they negotiated, not upsides, not incentives, not, you know, extra. And um, so if we're going to give points, let's give points to the honest, <laughs> you know, revelations of these contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I like that. There I are like some that. agents that are going to lose big time. It, and it's just wild. Like, I, all you have to do is look at if you see the words up to or a max of, then you know that's not the real deal, you know. And and then there's some deals that are really backloaded. And they're literally, there's a bogus year or two of dollars in the last year or two, simply so the agent can can go around saying he got a better average per year. But when you look at the deal, it's not good in the last year. Like, and, and I don't want to call anybody out, but there are big time players in our business who they may say that it's 30 million a year. It's really 25 million a year because of the last year is, is doesn't matter. It's just too high. So I would love to have, if we're going to have fantasy football, let's do it on truth and let's do it on what's real. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, you know, I guess you could see, um, you know, who we set, who we sign in the draft and all that, but that's, there's so much that goes into that, that, that's recruiting more than representation, to be honest. Um, so I don't know. That's an interesting thought, though. I think if you, I think if you, if you came and sat with me on a Sunday watching football, at first you'd be like, "Okay, this is really cool. Mike's got great TVs. He's got a great couch." And then as we settle in and just study football the whole day, it'd get kind of boring for many people, to be honest. It's um, there's not a lot of glamour in just sitting in my basement every single Saturday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, watching football. I enjoy it. Uh, I don't know if that would be for everybody. Yeah, and you must be pretty locked in. You're not necessarily having a good time. You are working. No, I am locked in, especially on Sunday. And you know, it's interesting. I got my TVs kind of in a triangle, one big one at 70 inch and then two fifty fives, And it's unreal how I can watch all three at one time. I can literally see everything that's going on. I've trained myself to do that. Um, it's a sickness, I promise you, <laughs> at least if you ask my wife. Thank you so much for your time, Mike. Is there anything um, you'd like to plug people should know about Vayner Sports or anything you're working on? No, I appreciate you asking about Vayner, and, I, and, I, and I'm really proud to work for an agency that, that puts players first and cares about them. And then, uh, you know, as we hang up, looking forward, I will say this, when I was on the team side, uh, July 4th, uh, was a fun, it was a bittersweet kind of holiday because, um, you know, you have the time with the family and, and maybe a few days, you know, vacation in and around. But as soon as July 4th is over, it was so depressing because you knew training camp was coming. <laughs> and you know, I don't have to deal with that anymore um, because I don't have to go to training camp. But how fun can this year be knowing we're going to have 12 teams in the college football playoff? And, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun watching people are rip saying that nil and the transfer portal are ruining the game not in any way i think the interest is at an all-time high and can't wait to see the college football you know season unfold this year and all the playoff teams it's gonna be a lot of fun i agree i mean i find it very interesting the transfer portal i, I guess one of the drawbacks would be that fans can't spend multiple years rooting for the same guy as much as they used to be able to in college sports. Yeah. I'm a Colorado fan and, and I can't even name 15 players like, and it's going to be like <laughs> Colorado. So I, I just, I kind of wait to see. And then I'll, you know, it used to be, I'll, I, I, you know, when you looked up a player, you know, you would look up what, where, where was he from? What high school did he go to? Now you look up where did he transfer from, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's just a different game. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike. It's been great talking with you. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching our video. Make sure you subscribe right there to our channel. Make sure you watch our other videos like this video. Please share it with your friends. Comment below. Do all the things. 